At four years old, the first signs of Charlotte Emma Aitken's extreme talent and pop sensibilities revealed themselves when she won a cruise ship talent contest by singing Aqua's Barbie Girl. The signs were there all along. Born on 2nd of August 1992 in Cambridge, England, Charlotte was the only child of an entrepreneur slash amateur performance artist slash showbooker and a former nurse and flight attendant. It seems that the young Aitken's musical prowess was definitely more of an inward talent rather than a family trait, as Charlie has said in many interviews that her family never really played music around the house when she was young, apart from when her mum would occasionally play her favourite 70s soft rockers, Bread or The Monkees, in the car on the way to school. As a youth, Charlie was obsessed with the Spice Girls, even going as far as commanding her group of friends to form a tribute act in the schoolyard. However, her friends would always make her play Scary Spice because of her chaotic frizzy hair. Charlie is of mixed Ugandan-Asian, her mother's side, and Scottish, her father's side, descent, with her mother moving to the UK when an evil dictator drove out all Ugandan Asians out of Uganda. Charlie has previously stated how she hated her hair when she was younger and wished she had blonde straight hair instead so she could play her idol Baby Spice. However, as she got older and started asking her mum more questions about her strict background, she started to appreciate her features more as she learned about her ancestral history and why she was perfect just as she is. On the other hand, Charlie's father grew up in peaceful Scotland and was allowed to be much wilder as a teenager. Charlie has recalled how her dad has always encouraged her to be weird, although she never really knew what that meant. She says in this article she interpreted it as meaning following the crowd was a terrible thing, so she has always tried to do what nobody else is doing. From the ages of 4 to 18, Charlie attended the elite Bishop Stratford boarding college. She enjoyed learning and achieved good grades in art, English literature and history. She has said that she was never the popular kid, but was rather happy in her own world with her small group of friends. She found music lessons unprogressive and vocal coaching pointless. Instead, she preferred art and would make bizarre performance videos with her best friends. However, the musical knowledge, especially the piano lessons, would come in handy when Charlotte first started her MySpace account under the username Charlie XCX, the XCX standing for Kiss Charlie Kiss, at the age of 14 and felt extremely inspired to start creating her own music. After discovering the music of the French electro label Ed Banger Records, including artists such as Yuffie, Breakbot and Justice. Here is Charlie talking about the Yuffie song Pop the Glock 13 years on. This is one of the first songs that really made me want to make my own music. I don't know, it just sounded so different to me. It sounded like she had this like very unique special attitude. Inspired to create her own music, Charlie began to craft her own demos using her old Yamaha keyboard, wanting to recreate the sounds of artists like Justice and Breakbot, but says she failed to produce the sound she envisioned. However, she still managed to complete some demos such as Dinosaur Sex. T-Rex, Dinosaur Sex, Watch Me War, Watch Watch me roar, watch me be like a dinosaur. <laughs> and I want to be Darth Vader and posted them online. Unexpectedly, 14 year old Charlie was contacted online by a promoter named Chaz, who invited her to perform at one of his upcoming illegal warehouse parties in Hackney Wick, East London. As her father and her mother were her most enthusiastic supporters, although her mother was a little worried, they drove Charlie to her first ever gig at an abandoned peanut factory where she would perform to over 300 people at 3 am in the morning standing on a crate with her iPod while the whole audience was on drugs. Sounds like a Charlie XCX concert. Unsurprisingly, Charlie loved it, saying that when she was 14, playing raves was all she wanted to do and had the delusional fantasy of herself growing up taking loads of drugs, having no money and playing each party like it was her last. Skins was quite big at the time. She has said that her rave performances were her and her iPod, dressed up weird, running around with glitter everywhere. I think it's interesting and prophetic of the music that she will go on to make that she says in this article that she used to do a lot of nursery rhyme rap stuff and pretend to be a five-year-old and make up beats with a Yamaha keyboard. She has also said that her performance style today, everyone just being mental, came from her early days as a rave performer. These warehouse performances would carry on for about two more years, during which Charlie became an established scene kid while still promoting her music heavily on MySpace. Her parents really supported her and would come to every gig, sometimes going as far as dressing up in Alice in Wonderland themed outfits, her dad dressing as the Mad Hatter. At the same time as performing at raves every weekend, Charlie also managed to persuade her dad to loan her some money on the promise that she would eventually pay him back, which she did, so she could record her first album, which was called 14, 
because she was 14, so I have 14 tracks. She wrote every song and played all the instruments, which is super impressive for someone so young. Even though Charlie now looks back at this album with distaste, going as far as to call it gimmicky dance tracks and fucking terrible MySpace music, I would definitely recommend checking out Francesca as it is a certified club banger. A big part of Charlie's musical heritage, which most people never speak about, is her childhood love for hip hop and rap music, including artists like Dr. Dre and Eminem, and how that inspired a lot of the sing rapping she has done throughout her career. I think you can hear that influence clearly in this song. Although 14 was slated for release in 2008, it was never given a full commercial release, instead only seeing a limited amount of copies being given to friends and presumably press members. A 2008 review of her music by The Guardian called it S Club Junior meets Crystal Castles or 8-bit electro for tweenies. She was also nicknamed as the pubescent MIA, the computer pop Kate Nash, Lily Allen lost in space and like Lee's grimy young British cousin. I think they liked her. Charlie's rave gigs eventually paid off as just before her 16th birthday she signed a record deal with Asylum Records, a subsidiary of Atlantic Records, and was given a huge advance which she felt awkward about and didn't want to tell her peers. She withdrew from the rave scene and stopped making gimmicky dance music, as she says. When she was signed, Charlie immediately hit a creative block and realised how much she didn't know herself as an artist. She felt like she hated pop music and wanted to make bad rap music instead. So to help her figure it out a bit faster, her label sent her to LA, where she took part in sessions with many different producers. Charlie has said of these first sessions that they were extremely unproductive and weren't aligned with the way she wanted to work. At the same time, Charlie was also completing her A-levels, which are the final examinations one takes before they go to university in Britain, and applying to university as she felt she needed to go out and discover who she was. She eventually enrolled in a fine arts degree at Slade College, which allowed her to move out of her parents' house and in with friends in London. Just like her father, she would gravitate instinctively towards performance art and created many different pieces, like dressing up as Britney Spears while singing Baby One More Time in a room plastered with Justin Bieber posters and spray painted with the phrase Britney lives on. However, Charlie found doing the explanation part behind the piece extremely annoying as she was just doing what she was doing because she liked it and couldn't be bothered to find out why. Though she had enjoyed her time at art school early on, she began to hate it. She dropped out after a year and a half. Fortunately, it was around this time that Charlie was finally paired by her A&R with a producer that understood and completed her vision. Ariel Rexheid at the time was an up and coming producer who would go on to produce some of the most memorable songs of the 2010s, such as Everything is Embarrassing by Sky Ferreira, Climax by Usher, When We Were Young by Adele, as well as producing whole albums for Haim, Vampire Weekend and Sky Ferreira. Charlie was dropped off by her A&R guy at his house and thought that she was about to have another awful session. But but instead wrote Stay Away in the two hours they had before she had to fly to New York. She listened to it on the plane journey and said, wow, this is it this is me. Around this time, Charlie left art school and in May and November 2011, she released the singles Stay Away and Nuclear Season respectively, and gained attention from music website Pitchfork, where she earned best new track accolades for both. After the release of Stay Away and Nuclear Seasons, everything snowballed. On the 12th of June 2012, Charlie released her Heartbreaks and Earthquake mixtape, which was completed in a week and produced by Blood Orange, Ariel Rexhide, Blood Pop, Paul White, Rudimental, Patrick Berger and Jay Paul. The mixtape contains multiple tracks that would later be on Charlie's debut album, as well as a number of covers and adding her vocals on top of songs by artists such as Drake. Only two days later, Charlie released the You're The One EP, which included You're The One and Nuclear Seasons. Charlie wrote You're The One while working in Sweden with Patrick Berger, whom she also worked with on Iconopop's I Love It. Journalists named Charlie as a new age goth pop princess, while Billboard magazine placed You're The One 16th on its list of the best songs of 2012, commenting that Charlie XCX released a string of dazzle pop singles this year none quite as fluttering as this synth-laden love song. The hype started to grow around Charlie and from August to September 2012, she supported Coldplay on their worldwide tour with the then name Marina and the Diamonds. Then on November 7, 2012, Charlie released her second mixtape, Super Ultra, which included the single Cloud Aura featuring Brooke Candy for free on her website. It was received with mixed positive reviews from critics and the public. Finally, to complete her transformation from scene kid to future global pop star, Charlie released her debut album, True Romance, on April 12th, 2013. It was universally praised by critics, with the then notoriously snooty ultra hipster Pitchfork giving it an 8.3. I think you can understand the whole Charlie XCX game plan from this 2009 quote in Dazed magazine. 
I want to prove to people that you don't have to become this big commercial pop writing machine to be successful, she explains. You can just do whatever you want and it will be fine. I'd like everybody to live a little and go a bit mental when they hear my music and just cover themselves in balloons and dance and roll around. That would be brilliant. How much did you know of Charlie's story already? How has this changed the way you view her artistry? Please let me know in the comment section down below. And before I go, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.